our last application for computer graphics is perspective projections. Uh, so if you've ever taken some art classes, they might have taught you about perspective. Uh, it's the you know, reason that things look like they're vanishing into the distance. So the, you know, the first couple uh, boards here you know, in, in real life are the same size as these little boards way back here, but of course it doesn't look that way to us in real life, so you, in drawing you try to also make it vanish into the distance. And for an art class, you pick a vanishing point and you draw a bunch of guidelines and you do a lot of erasing and tweaking until you get it right or you never get it right in my case. Uh, but it can be done beautifully as this person did. Of course, to do it more efficiently or at least to teach a computer to do it, uh, it's not so much about vanishing points as it is about the mathematics of it. And since we are talking computers, maybe the better application for perspective projections would be 1993 doom when you're looking down the hallway right this brick and that one way down there are the same size in real life but they of course one takes up a lot more pixels than the other one because it appears smaller because it's further away okay so let's work out how these perspective projections work with matrix multiplication it's pretty slick um, so here's our basic idea, and you don't want to see me try to draw this picture, so I'm stealing this right out of the book. Uh, uh, one of the things they do that's a little bit slick that saves computational cycles um, is they assume we're always projecting against the wall. Uh, so you put your perspective at D, at 0, 0, D, right? Um, so on the z-axis and you're always projecting your original shape that lives somewhere you know XYZ uh, back against the wall so you're going to project it to a new X a new Y but we know the Z coordinates going to be zero just because of where we set our axes so that saves a little bit of efficiency in that we won't have to compute the Z coordinate uh, we will just have to get the new X and the new Y based on projecting it to the wall um, we are doing uh, three-dimensional things here, by the way, so we are going to be using homogeneous coordinates still. So we'll still have x, y, z, and 1. And again, that final coordinate is going to always be 1, or it needs to always be 1. It'll end up getting tweaked a little bit, and we'll have to tweak it back to 1. Uh, okay, but let's take a look at where the x coordinate goes. What's the mathematical relationship between x and x asterisk here? So they do a nice job of, and again, we're ignoring y coordinates for the moment, so we're just working on the x coordinate. Uh, they do a nice job of breaking down the similar triangles that we've got here, because that's all it really is. That's all all of one point perspective is a similar triangles um, so you've got a full distance D right, so that distance uh, gets broken down into the the Z coordinate of the object so this far is Z uh, the rest of it is what's left over so it's D minus Z and then the um, original x-coordinate and the new x-coordinate. So as one often does with similar triangles, uh, let's set up a ratio. So say x star is to x. So uh, base of the big triangle, base of the smaller triangle is the same ratio as this side of the big triangle. Um, so that would be D uh, to this side of the triangle. So that would be D minus Z. And of course we really want this solved for X asterisk. <laughs> so X asterisk is D times original X over D minus Z. And because there's D in both places, 
um, or in two places. I'm actually going to multiply the top and the bottom of this fraction by 1 over d. I'm just going to simplify a little bit. Keep in mind I'm multiplying top and bottom of the fraction by the same thing, so I'm not changing it. I'm creating an equivalent fraction, uh, but it will just have x on the top and on the bottom will be 1 minus z over d. Um, so there's the sort of ultimate formula translation. Say our new x coordinate projected up here against the wall is going to be the old x coordinate divided by 1 minus z over d. And you can draw a very similar uh, set of triangles for the y coordinate, which I won't do, but uh, it works out the same way that the new y coordinate is the old y coordinate uh, over 1 minus z over d. Uh, so there's our new x-coordinate, our new y-coordinate. We know our new z-coordinate, by the way. Our new z-coordinate is 0, right? Uh, so that gives us enough that we can set up the mapping that we want. So we want to map our original point x, y, z, 1 onto the new x, new x, new y, 0, for z and 1 for the homogeneous coordinate. Um, so how do you actually do that? Uh, so take a look at this particular multiplication. So we are multiplying our original point x, y, z, 1 times this guy here. Uh, so notice we have get on the right layer <laughs> Um, notice we essentially have an identity matrix right here, except for the z coordinate has been zeroed out. So this will preserve x coordinates, preserve y coordinates, zero out z coordinates. So that goes to x, y, zero. And then notice as you multiply x, y, z, one by this very bottom row, you'll get zero x, zero y, you'll get z times negative 1 over d, so the negative z over d, plus 1, so, or written the other way around. Um, right there. Notice this transformation didn't exactly do what we wanted it to do. Notice it turned x into x and y into y. That's not the transformation we wanted. It did turn z into 0. Uh, and it didn't keep the one as one. The homogeneous, like homogeneous means same, right? That's, that one's supposed to stay the same. That turned one into the scaling factor for x and y. And if you want to get technical about it, it's the scaling factor for z also. <laughs> Obviously, you don't need to do that, but there's the key, right? We are going to save computational efficiency by essentially just running out the scaling factor in the homogeneous coordinate and then we're just going to divide by the scaling factor and dividing one two three four numbers well technically only two is all we really need to do but even if you do four uh, dividing four numbers by a constant that's already been computed is computationally faster than putting the 1 minus z over d here and the 1 minus z over d here and multiplying that out. Okay, so they, they've done a couple tricks for computational efficiency. Uh, so let's just take a, a look at how this works. Um, so here's an example. Um, they, these are the original points here. Uh huh. Let's get on the right layer. These are points that determine the edges of a like box in three dimensions. So there's your x, y, z, and your one. For your homogeneous coordinates. So there's a point at 315, at 515, 
five zero five three zero five right you can map that all out it makes a nice box but apparently what they want to do is a perspective projection on this and notice that their eyeball let's see if I can find the right picture let's go all the way back to not that one yes that one um, the eyeball right is at D yeah I know I'm not on that later anymore but the eyeballs at D so coming back here um, this is D all right so the eyeball is 10 units away from this thing and we're projecting it uh, projecting all these points from someone who's seeing it from this perspective of being 10 units away um, so they multiply that all out and notice what happens right the 315 stays 310 and the 515 stays 510 right so they know they're projecting it back onto that wall that Z wall uh, but the X and Y coordinates don't change what happens instead is you get the scaling factor for X and Y for each point down here at the bottom because it's a box there's only a front wall and a back wall to this box so there's only two different scaling factors but still what you do now is you say for each one of these points uh, I need to like for this first point I need to divide by 0.5 to get this back to 1. I need to get my homogeneous coordinate back to 1. So if I take 3, 1, 0, 0.5, the whole thing divided by 0.5, or multiplied by 2 if you want to think of it that way, becomes 6, 2, 0, 1. And as soon as we've gotten back to that all important homogeneous coordinate, we know. Uh, that we have scaled this point properly. Uh, so in the finish of their example here, and this is an example from the book, it's um, example 8 on page 143. Um, I don't really like that they left off the homogeneous coordinate down here at the bottom, but they said, yeah, the old point that was 315 now becomes 620. And so 1, 2, 3, 4 of the points need to get divided by 0.5 the other four of the points need to get divided by 0.6. Um, so 3, 1, 0 divided by 0.6 uh, becomes 5, 1.7, 0. I guess I should have circled the 0. Okay, um, so the only thing that's happening in your homework for perspective projections uh, is they're asking you to set a couple of them up. So just find this P matrix that does the perspective projection. They're not going to make you crunch through a ton of numbers to actually get some new coordinates. But now you know, and knowing is all of the battle.